Hello, and welcome to the Digital Rehearsal Hall, presented by the President's Own United States Marine Band. I'm Jason Fettig, and we started this series a little while ago to give you a behind-the-scenes glimpse at how the President's Own rehearses from the very first moments of our preparation for a piece. Today, we are playing a classic in the band repertoire, Charles Ives' Variations on America, originally for organ and then arranged for orchestra by William Schumann and band by William Rhodes. This is a piece that we got a lot of requests for for this digital rehearsal hall, so we hope you enjoy. from the beginning. Wonderful. Let's stop there for just a moment. If you could look at the theme with me, back to letter F. Um, so the grace notes uh, are not original to the organ. So what Ives originally had was just the hymn, uh, as you would have it in a hymnal, hymnal uh, as if you were playing it in church. So we could keep the grace notes very, very in the background. The grace notes, I think, pretty short, little flips, little drips of water. And if you could just be sensitive to the phrase off in the brass, for instance, in bar um, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth bar of F, uh, just take a little bit of time before we hit that next downbeat and be subservient to those folks. For the bells, Ken, this could be a little bit more to the four, though. Just the bing and then the bling. It's a little quirky thing that Schumann put in. I think that should be uh, you know, in, the, in the foreground, if we could. Can we just try that at the hymn for a moment, please? F, F. You could probably play out just a bit through the mute brass so we really feel this organ color here. Two and three.
Terrific, terrific. And Ken, on that last one, a little bit of a clear roll on the first beat and then a clear two. So ding, kind of thing, if you could. You might notice that we actually changed the orchestration and the way the Marine Band plays this here. We leave some of the instruments out that William Rhodes put in because it's not original to Ives, so we want to keep it in the background. We leave it just bassoons, bass clarinet, alto clarinet, and flutes. Took out saxophones to change the color, just in case you're wondering and you're using a score while you're watching us. Let's, uh, let's go on, please. So let's take this first variation. Um, kind of a reprise of the main theme. I think that this 16th note color, if you think of the original organ, it would be one of the manuals. We could be maybe a tiny bit softer than the forte indicated and very expressive. Kind of a little bit kind of um, rubato in a weird way, but, but definitely expressive. Right at G. One and two and three. <laughs> And I could I just, just address that one bar we finish. Yeep, up, 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 be. The grace note is just an appoggiatura to the trill, so it'll be you're starting the trill from above. Yeep, up, 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 really snapping off of that tie. In fact, why don't we try this? Why don't we try articulating it? Can we do that just so it, it sets up the flute and E flat clarinet after that? Just the woodwinds of that one bar, if I, if I could. The beep, up, 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 one and two and three. Yeah, tongue is 30 seconds. That's what I'm looking for. One, and two, and three. One more time. Yeah, tongue all of them. Yeah. Two, and three. <clears throat> Good, and let's add the crescendo in now. So, beep, up, 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 and then we'll hand it off to the flutes. Let's have everybody, please, G. G, that's very nice. Right at G. Two and three. Now, what Kurt is going to do here, he's got a little bit of tenuto that he's playing on the, the last bar. So the melody folks just wait just ever so slightly to meet him on that, that half note at the end. Can we try something else here? This is brand new, folks. I'm just trying this for the first time. In bar three before H, in the original uh, organ part, there's a, there's a fermata on beat four and a retard in that bar. And I think it might actually work in the band part. So, sha ba 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 bi ba di da da da. Can we just try that? So, a retard, three before H, and then a fermata on beat three, tiny bit of daylight, and then a ah tempo for the last two bars. Just that bar, three before H, if I could. Two and three. <clears throat> kind of like that. Let's add that in. Would you mind? While we're stopped, uh, piccolo, flute, E-flat, clarinet on the sh There's a real feeling of a leap here, so I'm not so concerned with the downbeat. I'm concerned with the second 30 second each time. You can put a little accent on that and give, it a, give us a feeling that we're kind of launching into that. And then it smooths out on yeah da 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 da. Let's just take the second half, and then I'll let you play for a little bit here. We're gonna start at one, two, three, four, five, seventh bar of G, seventh of golf. Brass, you have the lead. Two and three. So uh, for xylophone, bassoons, clarinets, if we could get a little stickier, oboes too, get a little stickier when we get to the 16th, and you may have to wait just a hair 
for our obligato to finish. Almost comically dry, I think, here, given the orchestration. Same thing? I promise I won't stop this time. Two, three. So this first interlude is a little interesting because in Schumann's orchestration, he's got everybody at fortissimo, including the muted low brass. But in the original organ part, the right hand is forte and the left hand is what Ives called a shadow key. So it's in a different key and he wanted it softer and to kind of just be crunchy under the surface. So the way we play this is we actually change the dynamic. So all the low brass, uh, low winds are playing uh, piano rather than fortissimo and then we leave the upper winds and the trumpets at fortissimo, which is the main, the main theme that we want to hear. Another interesting thing here is that the breath marks that are in here are Schumann's. If you know William Schumann's music, you know he used a lot of breath marks in his music. And I don't think he ever intended it for it to be a breath every single time. He just wanted a clear phrase off. So a lot of times we'll just kind of pause just a smidgen and then move on without actually breathing. Just something to think about there. For us folks, if we could actually even take the piano part down even more, the mute color is gonna be enough, so we can do it really at piano. Can I just hear the piano folks in bar two of I? This includes the tuba, euphonium, string bass, you're all piano as well. Second bar of I, um, every, all those folks, two and three. I love the dynamic, I love the color. Now I think what we'll need to do is just put a little bit more front on the notes and a tiny bit of taper so we get the articulation at that shadow. If we do it too smooth, I think it'll be lost. It'll just sound like a, a chord across. Let's take everybody at I, please. This dueling keys here. <clears throat> Yeah, good, and no retard. Just straight on through, like you don't care. Ba-da-da, beep, go donkey, go donkey. 
done. Um, this carnival music is probably one of the sections that Ives caught a little flack for when he played this in church and it made the kids laugh. You know, there's all kinds of moments in here that are pure Charles Ives, funny, sarcastic, humorous, all within the context of this patriotic feeling that Ives was, is so important to Ives. This is one of our most patriotic tunes, but he's putting it through a lot of different filters. Um, for us, I think we can put a little more of a bravado through this section, especially uh, the one, two, three, let's see here. After K, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh bar of K, when the saxes join and the bassoons join. Can I just hear you guys once, please? Really kind of sweeping, you know, really go after this. Uh, let it flow up and down. Uh, pickups to that, that bar. One, two, three, and. Just the sixteenths, just the sixteenths. Leave the melody out for a minute. One, two, three, and. That is marvelous, everybody. Thank you. The restarts, which happen here um, in the fourth bar of that lick and before as well, um, we can put a little accent on ba da 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 da, the 316 pickups each time. Uh, good. Everybody, please back to the beginning of this variation. This is variation J, right at rehearsal J. It's really terrific. One, two, three, and. Coda one more time. This is pickups to the last two bars before L, just so we can get it super clean. Starts with piccolo. One, two, three, and. One more time. A little bit more on third coronet, please, on the downbeat before L. You're the, you're the anchor. One, two, three, and. Just a hair more retard. I don't want to overcook this, but a little bit more will, I think, be appropriate. Believe it or not, piccolo, flute, E flat, clarinet, one, two, three, four, five before N, those last gasping, yup, yup, it's actually a little too loud because we're trying to match what the low brass have. It's a little conversation. The ones prior to that were fantastic. Uh, in two before M, as in man, two before M in horns and trombones, could you give me a little bit more? Sense of fun on shaka da 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 da. Make that one step higher in your articulation and volume than everything that comes around it. Snare drum helps you there as well. Terrific. I think in this duet between trumpet and Frank and Kurt, I think Kurt maybe a smidgen less, believe it or not, um, because your directional brass, Frank, I think a bit more. The lower octave is not original, but this is Schumann's invention. It's really cool. So let's try that together. Uh, L, one more time, and we'll go on. L.
lovely. Keep that thought. So this next interlude is the same as the last interlude. Rather than doing the crescendo that's in the score, we actually do it more like the organ part. Trumpets who have one melody are gonna be piano the whole time as the shadow dynamic, and low brass and tuba are gonna be fortissimo the whole time as the main left-hand kind of interest. Here it is, N, second interlude, N. <sighs> bit slower, Kurt, just a little bit slower. Or maybe a little faster for you guys. Let's meet in the middle. One, two. to stop you right there. It's not terribly clear in the score what uh, Ives Schumann wants, where he says broaden and slower at Q. Very subjective. I actually like to go not quite so slow at Q, because if you, if, in the original of this, there's a little bit of a kind of virtuosic feel to it, and it's orchestrated very heavy. So if we can lighten up a little bit on the dynamic and the accents and kind of glaze through these a little bit, I think it'll have a better feel. Um, one of the things you heard happen just a minute ago live for the very first time, which was interesting, is Kurt, our principal trumpet, can't really hear the flutes, but the flutes can hear Kurt. So as he was going and doing his thing, they were actually following him and not so much worrying about what I was doing, which is exactly what should happen. We're going to do it again. You'll see how as we go through these parts over and over again, things start to gel and molt, melt together through the, the ears and the efforts of the musicians themselves. One more time on this variation, Kurt, if we could. Yeah. I need to play this in one breath, so that's um, keeping it uh, double tongue. Okay. A good double tongue tempo would really help. Sure, that's another good reason to go faster. Let's take right on it. And clarinets, you'll and oboe, you'll obviously just copy whatever the flutes do style wise. Let's do right at variation five, and we'll go on to the end this time. Oh, oh. everybody. Just a few last things before we wrap it up here. In the recapitulation of the opening at R, horns and trombones, a little bit of a lighter touch here would be appropriate. Rather than real heavy, I think, through there. The hemiola stuff at S was fantastic. Not going to change a thing there. When we get to the menomoso, after that, fifth bar of S, 
This part's always a little strange. I think maybe what might help upper winds is if you hold on to the eighth notes just a little longer. They're a little too kind of yip, yip, yip. You're playing them as it's written, but bra, bra, bra. A tiny bit more body to the tone might help the pedal stuff that's happening in the original organ here in the low brass. And then we'll charge all the way through to the fourth bar from the end. And then I'll do a deliberate breath mark. So it's got a pshum, ba ba, a kind of a ta da moment. And then pause, shum, bum, bum, ba. And we'll do the coda at that point. So let's just take all that one more time for our viewers. Can I go back to P? P, please. Nice and light here. Yep. Thank you, gentlemen. P. One, two, three. everybody. And thank you very much for joining us once again for the Digital Rehearsal Hall. We look forward to more episodes in the near future, and we sure hope you will join us. Thank you. <laughs>